Thank you very much. Sure. Hi, Mercedes. How are you? I'm great. Yourself? Yes, very good. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, I'll, I'll get straight. I'm Ian. I'm from Hi Fi Way, which is a publication we've got here in Australia, obviously, because because you're about to come to Australia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get them. We'll get them. I'm sure you've been asked these questions a million times, so we'll get them whipped out straight away. So, you guys have you haven't been to Australia before, have you? No, this is the very first time. Oh, excited! Oh yeah, of course. I I wish I could show you out my window what it looks like right now. Here, it's like covered in snow. Just I'm like very excited for the warm weather, but also to play shows and like we always hear how great the Australian music scene is, you know, from across the world, I guess. So uh, it's just been like on our bucket list for a long time to come. So oh, I'm fantastic. glad we're finally doing it. <laughs> yeah, because you're in Canada, so I'm guessing it's, um, as you mentioned, snow. So it'd be freezing. Absolutely. Yeah. Freezing. It's really cold today. Yeah. So this is, it's just another like um, reason to get excited, I guess. <laughs> Give you the hot tip that's uh, because you guys do Fahrenheit, don't you, in, in Canada? No, we do, we do Celsius, um, but the USA does Fahrenheit, and it always confuses me. <laughs> okay, so over here, expect temperatures in there. Uh, oh, because it's March, isn't it? So probably mid to late thirties. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sunscreen. That's yeah. <laughs> Re recommend that you have, there's an expression over here called slip slop slap which is to do with your sunscreen make sure you put it on okay okay yeah good Delicious. good to <laughs> yeah. um so the new bloom festival is why um uh, soft call uh, coming over here um do you um like I mean, that's going to be three shows you've got here then i think you've got an extra side show as well on top of that um, what do you know about the other bands that you're on and, and what you're looking to, um, what are you expecting to give us at your show? Like, how would you stand out? Well, the bands that I know, like the bands that are playing at New Bloom as well, mm -hmm. um, it's a huge reason why we were so excited to be asked, just because it's all artists that I really enjoy listening to and that I look up to. Um, you know, I, I've been a huge fan of Fleshwater for a long time, and so I can't wait to see them play and hopefully get to meet them and get to know them. Um, I really admire them and, and uh, Touche, obviously, Movements we've played with before and they're just really great. Citizen, I'm so excited. Like, there's honestly, the whole festival is so stacked and to be asked to be a part of it is really an accolade in itself because we get to play with bands that we just really like so um and then what to expect um at a soft cult show it gets really intense i really call out misogyny and sexism at the shows um and i really i'm like i i kind of just go for the throat and I don't stop. <laughs> so I I guess it, for some people it can be uncomfortable, for other people it can be really cathartic and just really like everyone lets out their feelings at a soft cult show. Um, so yeah, I guess what to expect, I'd say expect to be challenged and expect to be like incited into like sort of this riot girl movement. <laughs> Well, so that's art in itself, isn't it? Art is expression and, um, and and getting your thoughts out there that need to be spoken about rather than just containing them and pushing them down. So that's fair so enough. <laughs> we've talk, been talking about, I mean, you're, I mean, you've mentioned there that um, uh, being asked to be on that festival with these particular types of bands, musically, well, I've not seen these live, obviously, if you've not been to Australia, but certainly on record, because that's how old I am, on record or digital, is um, the, the, the sound that you have is actually quite different from the other bands. Do you mm -hmm. think that's also part of the, the challenging aspect that, that, that you go and present? Yeah, I mean, I think that it is like sometimes um, an advantage to be an outlier in this 
you know, a lineup because you're going to stand out just because you sound different and um, soft cult already is inspired by so many different genres like we kind of have more of a shoegazy dream pop sound, but then the lyrics are very like riot girl punk and they're dark and so I, I like the juxtaposition and I like the dichotomy of those two things. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a challenge. It's more like, I like to think of it as like maybe people who are coming to shows like that, they aren't super familiar with dream pop or shoegaze, but maybe we could be the band that is like the gateway that opens them up mm. to that world, you know? Well, you're certainly leading the way because look, I'm originally from the UK. So I know of a magazine that you've recently been on the cover story uh, of Kerrang! And I read that, right. uh, which I, I, I saw that because Kerrang! are massive. Like they've been around since the early 80s. That's like the mm. pinnacle to be on. So and obviously I had a good read with that. And I think it was Emma who uh, who did that. I mean, the how did that, when that obviously suggests that you're leading a particular path, how did that come about? Oh, we've had so much support in the UK, which is amazing. I love the scene over there too. The music scene is so inspiring and like so many masters of the craft come from the UK. Just bands that I look up to like Radiohead, for example. Um, it's just, it's such a rich environment for creativity. And so I feel really lucky that we are championed by so many people um in the uk and so many media outlets and radio and stuff it is honestly kind of a surprise and i'm not really sure how that happened um but we got the email and we obviously were really excited and said yes please and so uh yeah i'm not i'm not sure how it all came about but we hopped on it for sure do you think that's a, a, a vindication of the message that you have been putting out there for the last few years definitely i mean Anytime it's recognized, it's an honor, right? And then I think when media outlets like Kerrang choose to have an artist like Soft called, you know, like, you know, it's a woman and someone who presents as non binary, and we're really trying to spread this awareness and empowering message and sort of feminist message that is really cool because it's like that media outlet is actively choosing to give us a larger platform in order to raise that awareness and spread that message. So it means a lot to me, not just because it's like my band mm -hmm. and obviously it's very flattering and cool, but it's like, a, it's it means a lot to me because it just means we're gonna reach so many more people and hopefully empower those people. The, the, um... The messages that you you put across, and you mentioned it at the, at the very beginning there. I, I think it's an example. Um, look, I went on Phoenix's uh, is it Twitter X, and yeah. she she mentioned sorry, Phoenix mentioned about um, what heaven was about. Yeah. Then, then then I read other reviewers, and they suggested that heaven was about something different. Is that? Is that something you actually enjoy that people actually will go into and take their own opinion of what these songs are about? Or is that something where you think, no, it's it's this? Well, I mean, that's the beauty of art is it is subjective. And, and I think people tend to project their own meaning onto art a lot of the time. Um, so we might have written it about something, um, but if someone else relates to it, and they relate it back to themselves. It's like, that's another cool thing about art is that it helps you process things and it helps you, like you kind of find the meaning in it that relates back to you. So I'm not like offended by it so long as it's not like, you know, so long as the message is still something that I would be proud of and it's not something that is completely misrepresenting what we're trying to say. Um, but so far, I've never seen anything like that other than the odd, like, oh, they hate men comment, which we get a lot, but we obviously don't hate men. Um, but yeah, that, I, I, I don't really 
fine. I'm not offended by it. I, I think it's like important that people connect to it in their own way. Yeah. The, 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 uh, there's obviously the, when we know what dress is about. I think that's fairly straightforward. Um, and someone to me, uh, my belief is that that's about internet trolls. Yeah. So, so taking into account, say, just them couple of songs that are there, one maybe linear element that's gone through that that possibly hasn't been brought to the table, and maybe has, you've probably been interviewed thousands of times, is do you believe that the way your songs are relating and the context in there is also impacted by social media these days? That That's changed people's, well, behaviours, really. Totally, yeah. It's like a reflection of the times that we live in and and you know because social media impacts society it's going to impact how we um interact socially it's it already in a huge way um so maybe like in the 90s you might hear heckling from the crowd if someone's not feeling what you're saying on stage um i feel like that happens less and less now and it's usually you know, behind a screen, someone on the keyboard, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, in that sense, maybe it's a good thing. In other ways, a lot of people are impressionable and they buy into things that they read on the internet. So there's like a responsibility to make sure you only put out there what you truly believe in and what you, you know, have fact checked and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I would say like musically, uh, you know, it, it impacts the way we write because it impacts the way we see the world and interact with the world. For example, we have a song about Sarah Everard and had it not been for the internet, I don't know if that story would have made it to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, the song is about the insane victim blaming of that situation that happened a lot like primarily on the internet was where you'd see those comments so um stuff like that is definitely a huge influence when we kind of can see into the darkness of of people's psyche sometimes i feel like they're a lot less filtered when they are protected by anonymity right so mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> no, most definitely. Uh, you actually also answered another question it, all in that as well. So thanks for being so effective. So it was <laughs> had another one then, it's gone now. So um, I mean, I, I don't have an awful lot of time. So I do have to ask then, so what's next for Soft Cult after you've been here in Australia? So we have a little bit of time. We go on tour again at like the end of June to do our headline run in the States. And then we've got some more stuff lined up for the fall touring wise. But what I'm really excited for is to sit down and start writing the next thing and really get creative with, um, yeah, I feel like I haven't written a song in a minute because we've been touring so much, which is great. I'm like so excited about that, but it's gonna feel really good to like get back into the creative mode again. Yeah, nice, nice. Well, I did. Yeah, so you just toured the states with um, as uh, Glixon and Superbloom, and you yeah, played the, you played the end in Nashville, which is one of my favorite venues. Um, oh no way! Like, yeah, you only played it like two weeks ago or something. Twenty third of February. Yeah, because yeah, um, we just got back, and that venue's so legendary. Like on the yeah. wall, they have all these names of bands. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love that place, but I love Nashville actually. So that's that's another story yeah. for another time. And um, so, I mean, what was, I mean, how has it been like touring with these other bands and, and winning over, say, their crowns? It's been great. I mean, I felt really lucky because in on this tour in particular, Glixon, like, haven't toured very much yet. And I just think they're such a special band and they are going to blow up for sure. So I just feel lucky that we caught them, like, right at the beginning of their trajectory. Um, and and getting to see them play a lot of these cities for the first time um it it felt really good because it reminded me of the bands that took us out on our first tours 
and how special that is and how like grateful I still feel to those bands. And then also to see their fans see them, mm. you know, on stage for the first time, it's just really exciting atmosphere. So it was a very, the tour had good vibes for sure. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you've been around for 13 years based on what I read uh, from your previous band. And, and obviously you've still got a very important message that you're putting out there or messages that you're putting out there. Have though you seen a change in the industry in the 13 years for a positive or has it been much of a muchness? Oh, I definitely say it's going in the right direction. It, it's frustrating because it always feels like it's so slow and it's like a constant pushing this boulder up the hill for change, you know, but I see a lot more representation now than I did when I was a teenager. So a lot more women in music, a lot more non-binary people, you know, uh, I see that the scene is becoming less gatekeepery. So there's more, you know, it's not, not all just white artists in rock and roll anymore. You see like a lot of different cultures that are bringing their influence and they're, they're helping, you know, the scene evolve and grow, which it needs to do, you know? So it's it's just really cool to see it be a lot more intersectional that way. And of course there's still problems that we need to solve but in the last 13 years, I'd say it's become so much more inclusive. Um, and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. We just got to keep pushing for it. Well, I can assure you, Australia um, is very, very uh, open. It's very, very fluid in, in how it's, um, it approaches people. And I believe it's because it's a generational thing, as horrible as that sounds. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know, as the next generation come along, they champion uh, well, they are um, uh, uh, the, the people uh, which will be, you know, your primary audience to move forward and make the changes as time goes by, um, as the older generation disappear. Simple as that. <laughs> so it's the reality. Yeah, it's true. I I'm not sure how much time I've got left because Tiana's not told me. Um, I think I had 15 minutes, so I'll wait for that. Um, the one thing I'm going to ask is a bit of a random thing. Um, all right, well, ask one question. Um, I've read I've, I've read with other people musically who are with siblings that there's a style of music, oh, so there's a there's a tone and a, a melody that comes out that you only get with siblings and no other artists. Is that mm -hmm. something that you found working with your sibling? I it's hard to say because I've never had a reality when I wasn't making music with Phoenix. Like in this band and my previous band we've just always collaborated together but i do notice from the outside that when siblings do make music together there's like a chemistry there there's an understanding and a trust that i think just speaking from my own experience might be kind of hard to achieve that with someone else mm -hmm. um and I mean, we hear it all the time, you know, people say that the harmonies, right, it's our voices are really similar. And we track, we double track each other's vocals. So when you hear the recordings, it's not clear who's singing lead. Um, and, and so I think that's something that's really cool. I've always thought of soft cult as being like, two front people, you know, because we both sing, and we both um take on the duties basically i just happen to be the one with the guitar and phoenix happens to be the one on drums but it really is like a team effort you know excellent well thank you for that uh all right so that's my time i think i might have gone a little bit over um best of luck when you do come over here for australia for the in bloom festival uh new bloom festival sorry and hopefully you'll come back again and actually be able to go to some other parts of australia as well and we'll, we'll see you then I can't wait. Yeah, thanks so much for the questions. They were all great. Thank you very much.